Praise the Lord to the saints. We are so glad to be with you today by way of Facebook and YouTube. We want to thank you uh, for your commitment and listening uh, to the telecast, listening to the word, being encouraged by the word. We're just grateful for that. Uh, we want you to know today that we want you to be encouraged. We've been on a series, Destruction Through Disrespect, talking about the way society wants to structure the world to put everybody out of their place and we know that now we want to see man in his proper place woman in a proper place and, and when i say this you know a lot of people already become defensive god put us to be in different places in the family the man to be in a place the woman to be in a place the children to be in a place there is order in god's family but what i found out is that society itself wants to remove the man from the position of being a man. So today we're gonna to talk about ways to respond when the world disrespects your God. Sometimes we have to take a stand, sometimes we have to fight, and sometimes we have to kneel and rest. But we're gonna go through the scriptures and we're gonna talk about how do you respond when somebody disrespects your God. We already understand that the world doesn't love biblical principles, truth. And it even doesn't understand the love of God that is beyond man's comprehension. But the world desires for the church to follow the flow and to pull man out of his place, to disrespect your, your savior, Jesus Christ. But today be encouraged as we see the word talk about how do we respond when people disrespect your God. I pray that your heart will be transformed into a heart after God. We love you and God blessings be on you. Amen. How many of y'all thank God for a party? Oh, yeah. Amen. I'm so grateful. Amen. God is so good. He's a wonderful Savior. 
And I'm glad to be on the Lord's side. How many of y'all glad to be on the Lord's side? Amen. I'm no matter the size of the crowd, God is still on the throne. No, how, no matter how many millions or hundreds or thousands, if there be one, the gospel is still true. Amen. Anytime you agree with God, you are in the majority. Yes. Can I get amen? amen. I, God, don't, God don't have people elected through uh, the number of votes that's voted to make something right. God don't operate on the same principle that the world does. Popular vote. Don't get the bill passed. Can I get amen? amen? See, God, when God says something, you got two choices. You can agree with him or you can disagree with him. Amen. But God always right. His word is always true. That's why people change. Folks change. Things change. Attitudes change. Ideologies change. But God said, I'm the Lord. I change not. He is the only one. That sits in the midst of this universe. That has the characteristics called immutability. He is not able to mutate or change. Because he is perfect. He has everything he'll ever need. There's nothing else he can learn. There's nothing else he needs to do better at. Because he's already perfect. So I got the change but he remains the same. And I'm so grateful that I can depend on him that he's the same this week as he was last because he don't change. And amen. How many of y'all thank God that he's doing great things? And how many of y'all know God know what we need? And he know when we need it. Can, he, can I say amen? And how many of y'all believe his word going to keep you? You got to trust. You got to trust this book. See, I'm here. I'm sticking with the book. I ain't sticking with the Republicans or the Democrats or the Libertarians. I'm sticking with the book. <laughs> Mr. Washington, I decided I'm going to stay with the book because you got, I've been to where you got Sar Sadducees and Pharisees and you got the Herodians. Ain't nothing changed. It's the same stuff in a different time. Same spirits inside the same men doing the same stuff. But one day, I'm going to put these war clothes off. And I'm looking for a day elder where I won't have to study. War no more. But he said, while I'm here, I'm going to stand here and fight on anyhow. How many of y'all thank God you got a fight in you? You got to have a fight. You know, you know what, y'all? Going to stand before a holy throne one day. It won't be before the preacher. One day you're going to leave here and you're going to have to stand before God and you're going to have to give an account of what you did in this body. Amen. So Alexander, I hope it was for easy for the preacher and the pastors to be exempt and to say, no, I ain't got to go by the same way. But I got to go by the same way you got to go. Amen. I'm going by the fair. I'm going to meet Jesus at the fair. I'm going to stand there. Anyhow, can I get amen? How many of y'all going to meet Jesus at the fair? Oh, you got to be ready to meet him. Amen. Let us pray, God. We give you honor and praise. We're so grateful for the celebration of a risen Lord. I'm still happy that you went down in the grave for three days and three nights. But I'm so glad death couldn't hold you down. It tried to hook you, but it couldn't. You got up with all power. And God, I thank you that I'm not serving a dead Savior, but a risen Savior. And I'm not preaching from Moby Dick. I'm not preaching from great expectations. God, I'm preaching from the Bible, the living word of God. A book that moves, that revives, that thrives in the heart of man. It tears down, it destroys, and it builds up. God, I thank you for your word. Now, God, I pray that your word will be planted in good ground and bring forth fruit, some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. And we give you praise and honor for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all grateful? 
We're going to get right into the word. If you would, open up your holy books to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 39. We're going to be bouncing around this morning. But I, I want to talk about, we're still on the series, Destruction Through Disrespect. And a lot of people don't understand how important it is to be respectful. And we don't understand the order that God put inside the household. And I've been trying to allow you to understand that there is a diabolical plot from the enemy to take the man out of his place, to take the woman out of her place, to take the children out of her, their place. Have y'all have y'all been watching TV and all the news shows talking about what kids' rights are? How they get a chance to make a decision on what they want to be and how they want to do it. And parents are supposed to be sit back there and say, you know, this is what the kid want to do. The Bible says a child left to himself bringeth his parents to shame. And the Bible says train up a child in the way he should go. So my job ain't to do what they want me to do. It's just to do what I'm supposed to do. And if they don't do what he said do, it'll be in spite of what I said do. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Listen to me. We got to teach the truth. But society is trying to put the woman in a, another place she don't supposed to be in. And the man in a place he don't supposed to be in. And got everybody mixed up that God has an order. God ain't changed. God's still a God order. When God says something, he mean it. And what, what I have to do is preach against the tide and the currents that the world is turning in and the church sometimes get caught up in the world. Oh, y'all in here. So, so when I'm telling the truth, sometimes I feel resistance because the resistance is not against me. It's because they've gotten in the current and they want to fit in with the world. My job ain't to fit in with the world. I got to feel what God is doing in the, in the heavenlies and make sure the same flow in heaven is flowing through me on earth. And sometimes my flow got to go against the flow that this world has put down here. And the man is supposed to be minimized. Oh, come on, help me, y'all. The man's role is supposed to be minimized, take him completely out of the picture. Disrespect him, destroy any confidence he has, first of all, in his God, then take it out of himself. And then you just got somebody sitting in a place with no purpose. Y'all remember what I said? A week ago. Vision brings about responsibility. Fulfillment of responsibility brings about a man's destiny. So what he wants to do is to remove the responsibility off of a woman and make her feel they can be footloose and fancy free. Used to be women would be there when men were missing. Now you got women running the street just like a man now. Come on, help me. Okay, y'all. We got to get in our place. Can I get amen? But the enemy don't want people in, in their place. He don't want people to fulfill their role. And then when, when, when he comes into his role, you got to understand how to handle the disrespect of this world. So today we're going to talk about how do you respond when folks disrespect your God? Now, come on, help me. Elder and I, if you disrespect me or I disrespect you, what will be in place is, Elder, would you forgive me? Can I get amen? When you would disrespect somebody or somebody disrespects you, your mouth can be used as a tool to say, can you forgive me? But when you fool around and disrespect my God, there are some ways I need to respond to you. And see, what we got now going on is the world want to tell everybody how things ought to be. See, I ain't looking for, listen to me, I want y'all to hear me clearly. I'm not looking for any Republican or Democrat to tell me anything that don't line up with this word. I say both of them so I don't mind being, if two, two parties can be mad at me, I'm okay. Because I ain't got to be in either one. I just want to make sure I'm in that party. <laughs> the one minister Washington where they going to wear white robes and walk on streets of transparent gold. I ain't never seen transparent gold. I guess God said, I'm going to just tell you something that your mind can almost imagine. I want to be at the right get-together. My job ain't to be in no cliques. I don't get in cliques. I don't need a clique 
I'm already with the clicker. Y'all with me? I'm with the creator who made the click. Oh, y'all ain't. I'm going to stay with him. I don't mind folk getting mad at me, but I'm going to stay with him. Now, we get into the book and we got to learn how to respond because folks would disrespect your God. They will get to the point to where they'll want to. Sometime I, I, I got to get into the subject, but sometime it, it don't dis disturb you when folks in the world, athletes and movie stars and famous folks can start telling you so much about what God demands and just because they are popular some for some reason folks think they got a voice in their house oh, come on because they are popular all of a sudden they can tell you something and they can tell you how God is and how he sees things you, you don't understand God the love you say God is love yeah, but you don't understand the depth of his love and if you only understood the depth and the whip, it's, it's beyond man. So you got the world not trying to tell folks what God stands for and what God approves and what God disapproves. And they condemning stuff God didn't condemn. And they saying things are right that God say not right. But they want to label everything God. And even the church going for the mess. Can I get amen? We're not a hateful group of people. We're full of the love of Christ. But what God say, that settles it. I don't need to worry about agreeing with somebody who's trying to make God in their image. God already in an image. He's making us in his image. But we can't make him in our image. Can I get amen? How I respond when somebody disrespect my God. There, there are three things that we can do. Let me, let me, let me talk about it real quick. The two, three, three part points we're going to get to. Let me just go through the points. First time, sometime you got to fight. Then sometimes you got to stand. Then other times you got to kneel and rest. See, there are different ways you, you, you got to respond to folk when they disrespect your God. Sometimes, members of wives, you got the, the, Sister Burns back at home. Them can't little girls down in the country. Oh, y'all ain't hear me on the. On the dirt road, they'll fight you. I ain't going to have you fighting up in here, sister. Listen, listen to me. You get them cantaloupe kind of girls on the road. You get them motley girls on the road, they may fight you. You go to Utah, Alabama, and you brother, brother Hardy, you might have to fight them on the dirt road if you disrespect this God. Some stuff ought to make you fight mad. Come on, help me now. I just... Some stuff that, that, that said, some stuff down in you ought to turn a righteous indignation. I ain't talking about the anger of the world that work, work of death. I'm talking about a righteous indignation. Something that is stirred by the righteousness of God that re, re, revolts against the world rules and the world standards and the world ideologies and the hypothesis of the world. How many of y'all know you ought to have a righteousness down in you, Mama, Mama Long, that just burns in you? So I'm ready to fight now. We're going to get to the first point. Sometimes you just got to learn how to fight when somebody disrespect your God. Go to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17. I'm going to read two verses. I mean, no, I'm going to read verses 39 through 49. I got to get down. I got to, I got to read. And David girded up his sword upon his armor, and he attempted to go. Now listen to me. This is, this is at a scene where you got a nation. Somebody's a nation. nation. You got a nation with a king who's taller than anybody from the shoulders up. Uh -huh. But they all at a battle now. The Philistines or the Philistines are, are sitting in one place and the Israelites in another place. And, and they sitting there and they brought out their great warrior. Uh -huh. Nine feet tall. Nine inches. Nine feet, nine inches tall. Can you imagine that's taller than Shaquille O'Neal? He could probably slap Shaquille O'Neal to the floor with one hand. Wow. This was a big man. He had a coat of mail on him, 25 pounds. He had a spear that was 15 pounds. He was a big man, and he was saying, listen, Israel, y'all send a man out 
to fight me. And if, if he fights me, if he defeats me, you can be over the Philistines. But if I defeat him, we'll rule over you. Now, out of all the kingdom, not even the king wouldn't stand up. You got a little shepherd boy. Oh, come on, help me. Y'all better be careful when you let some folk find out. Folk talking about your God. Some other folk just go along to get along. Some, some stuff you can't just go along to get along. So in verse 39 it says, and, and this is what David did. David girded up his sword upon his armor. Uh-huh. And he attempted to go, for he had proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. Now, at this point, give me point A, Frank. Fight with what you have fought with. Don't, don't listen to me. You got church folks. Let, let, me, let me finish the verse, Mama Longer. I got to get this in. And he took his staff in his hand and he chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. And he put them in a the shepherd's bag, when he had, which, which he had, even in a script. And his sling was in his hands and he drew near to the Philistine. Fight with what you have already fought with. See, you got too many Christians watching too much TV. And they're doing stuff like this. I rebuke you in the name of Paul, in the name of Jesus. I cast you out right now in the name of Jesus because I heard Sister Alexander say that at church. Ah. We want to take on the mannerisms of other folks around us and we don't know God ourselves. We, we ain't been in no battles ourselves. Listen to me. What I have to fight the enemy with is what I fought the enemy with in the last battle. I can't use your stuff. You ain't hear me. So you got to understand when, you, when you're battling for God, Mama Johnson, when you begin to learn how to handle the word, the word will clave to your hand. You, you, see, this, this, in, in this particular thing here, one size don't fit all. So you got to learn how to fight the enemy with, with stuff that brought you out years ago. Stuff that got you over Brother Salfo in your deepest place. You got to say, God, I got to go back and use the same faith. See, some people try to make you put their faith on. I can't wear Sister Alexander's faith. Her faith may be much greater than mine. Her relationship may be much deeper than mine. So I might put her stuff on and it's too heavy for me. I might can't move in the things she fight in, but I can fight with what I fought with. Oh, y'all. Somebody said, well, I don't know as much of the Bible to be able to fit. You know Jesus is alive and well. You know, somebody said, well, you don't know all the Bible. I don't know. I know he rose. Oh, come on, brother Seth. I might be talking to somebody who know all about atheistic ideologies. I say, but he rose. I know. I know he rose. How you know that? Because he rose in me. David fought with what he had already fought with. Our victory is from faith to faith. See, sometimes we listen to TV shows and we try to read books with step one, two, three, and four on how you can defeat the enemy. But all you reading is some words, but you ain't handled that word. So you got to grab what you had that helped you to get out of your hole the last time. And you got to pull your sword out and say, mm, it's still, it's still work. I, I can help. I, I ain't got to get a book on seven steps to success. Oh, y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. Listen to me. Some people like to read stuff so they can, they can be successful, but listen to me. All that's good for extracurricular, but when you're in the middle of a battle, you got to use stuff you already know how to use. So you know what he told Saul? Man, I'm, you bigger than me, you taller than me, ain't none of the stuff you fighting in made for me to fight in. So you got to tell the enemy, say, let me remind you of how I fought you the last time. What did I use to fight you the last time? A sling? Didn't I defeat a bear? Didn't I defeat a lion? What did I use? A sling. See, y'all got slingshot faith. But what you got to understand is slingshot got faith on the end. 
But it's amazing how all the men in Israel didn't nobody stand up but David. Okay. 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 Arm ain't no good if you ain't using it to fight. Uh-huh. Everybody looked good in the uniform, but they weren't getting down like a clown. You got to get out there and fight. Somebody said we got to fight. Let me go on down here. He said this, and, and the Philistine came on and drew near to David, and the man by the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. For he was but a youth, ruddy, and a fair countenance. Listen to this. I, I, I want to go to the sad point. Let me go on down, go on down a little further. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with stays? And the Philistine, he cursed David by his God. Now, you, point two. <laughs> refuse to let somebody disrespect your God. Oh, God. When somebody talk ugly about your God, you got to put your feet down. So hold it. Come on. Hold it. See, when the Bible said he cursed him in the, in, the, in the Hebrew, when I looked that word up, it means to speak light of, to, to, to esteem lightly. In other words, he said, your God is like a flea. Y'all, y'all got to be careful. See, I don't know about y'all. So, do y'all really know how big the God is y'all serving? Do you know, Sister Alexander, when you, you get on your knees and you bow before the king of kings? I ain't talking about in front of President Biden. Not, 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 not in front of Putin. Y- y'all ain't hear me. No, 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 you're not bowing before a man. You're bowing before God. Do y'all know the backing that we have? I, I, I just I'm trying to I'm trying to paint a picture. When you pray, who you pray? You, you pray like God don't even hear you because you don't even believe what you saying. Why you saying? You just doing something. And then somebody want to come in and steam your God lightly. Well, I've been to church. You know that church stuff don't work. You know all the folks in the church are hypocrite. You, you know how people do that kind of stuff. I've been going to church, man. Them folks up there, worse, they worse than the folks out here. Come on now. That God, that, that God stuff don't work. Wait just a minute now. You ain't fixing to steam my God that lightly. Because whether you know it or not, it was him that watched over you all last night. How many of y'all know God allowed you to live like a heathen? How, how many of y'all God let you live like a heathen? You were lost, didn't want him. Pull up from the floor up. Huh? How many of y'all ideology was messed up and God let you live like that? Living in sin and God still holding back the hand of judgment. And you mean to tell me when God then brought you out of all those dangers seen and unseen that you gonna just think you before anybody? How many of y'all know God is behind me? He in front of me. He on my side. He on top of me. He on the bottom. God is everywhere. And listen to me. When you talk about my God, you in trouble. Now, I think when he told David that, I think David said, I'm fixing to whoop your head now. I know that part ain't in there. But I think there was some rose up and David said, boy, you ain't even tough as a bear. You ain't bad as a lion. Y'all amazed how David wasn't even worried about him being nine feet, nine inches tall. He, he, that didn't even phase him. All he was thinking about is, you ain't nothing but another animal I got to kill. If I watch over sheep, listen to me, listen to me. If, if anybody bother my sheep, I'm going to try to kill them. And you're trying to bother all the God folks, I don't want to take you out. Now you're trying to tell me my God is small that delivered me from what I went through. Somebody say, I'm fixing to fight you right now. What did David do? (laughs) Listen to me. He cursed him. Didn't he curse him? And it goes on and says, uh, what verse am I in now? 24. Y'all help me now. 
44? Okay, 44. Y'all, y'all, I'm, I'm trying to get there. I'm, I'm trying to make, I'm, I'm going too fast. 17 to 44. I'm, I'm right there. God is good at the top. And the Philistines said unto David, come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. And then David said to the Philistines, thou comest to me with the sword and with the spear and with the shield. And the shield was being carried by somebody. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. I'm, I'm mad. I'm fighting mad right now. The God of the armies of Israel whom thou hast defied. Now, he said, I come in the name of the Lord of hosts. First of all, I ain't depending on the host behind me. I'm depending on the host above me. You, you got to understand, any man that's in a battle would never run to the side where the folks fighting against him are unless he believed he got something greater with him than they got with them. Okay. Okay. The Bible said that he ran to the side of the Philistines. Elder, he ran to where the Philistines were to fight a Philistine. Oh, so you ain't going to ever speak lightly of my God. I'm going to show you just how much I don't respect any of this. I'm running to where you all are. And I'm fixing to whoop him in y'all face. Oh, come on, listen to me, listen to me. Think about the view, brother Sappho. He said, I'm going to whoop him and give y'all a bird's eye view of me whooping him so you can see his face when I take him down. Listen to me. If he had fought him from the side of the Israelites, they would have seen him take the, the Philistine down. They would have been looking on the face of Goliath. He said, but no, I'm going to run to your side and I want y'all to see me whoop him face to face. I want you to see my back, but I want you to see his head. I'm taking his head off today. Come on. Sir. It's somebody when you got that real fight in you. God changed the view. Most folk mom alone ain't going to fight with their back to the enemy. The Bible said he ran to the side of the Philistines. Oh, come on. So they got a view and all the Philistines looking. And Goliath doing all this talk. And David doing his talk. And how many of y'all know you got to be able to fight when folks talk about your God? You got, you got to have some fight in you. Let me, let me go on down. Somebody said refuse the disrespect of your God. What goes on down? It says, it said, this day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee. Huh? I will smite thee into mine hand. Now I will smite, I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. Somebody say he prophesying. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear for the battle is the Lord. David wasn't worrying about what he was fighting with. He wasn't worrying about, he wasn't worrying about Saul's tools. He wouldn't worry about the 15 pound spear. He wouldn't worry about the big sword that was made for a giant. He wasn't even concerned about that. He said, I'm not worried about that. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Listen to me. Lord of hosts mean that there's a host in heaven dealing with mankind. And he said, I know God. How many of y'all know God got your back? Have y'all ever walked into some stuff and you say, I know the Lord of hosts is with me? How many of y'all folks that left you? But you say, I'm going to stand on what God say. How many of y'all in this room stand on what God say? Oh, y'all. Yeah. Looking at it, and it came to pass. Ain't that right? Ain't it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David. And David hasted and ran toward the armor to meet the Philistine. What did he, he met him, didn't he? And David put his hand into his bag. And what did he take out? He took out what? Wait, now this got to be wrong. He didn't take out a, he didn't take out a sword. 
how many of y'all know we got to use the tools that God give us in his grace? Amen. David chose five smooth stones. Five. It was five giants in the land. But he chose five smooth stones, letting you know it wasn't one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy. It was a symbolicalness of God's grace working through a child what a grown-up wouldn't even allow him to do. How many of y'all know sometimes we got to have a childlike faith? David was a young youth. The Bible said he was a child. In other words, he was a child based on, because see, growing up sometimes think too much. Sometimes you just can't think about the stuff you're facing like you're thinking about it. Come on, come on, y'all. Sometimes you're thinking all night, how you going to get out of this? You're thinking all night, how God going to fix it? You're thinking all night, what going to happen? You're thinking all night about option one, option two, and option three. Sometimes your mind is on what was said and your, your mind on the option. I'm, I'm going to fail here. I'm going to fail there. I'm going to fail here. I, ain't no way I'm going to make Who you looking to? Who you working for? Who you trusting in? You ought to run to the Philistines. So, well, God, he'll make a way for me. But God put you through a rough situation. Where, where you trust that? When things don't look right, why are you all up all night long? I had some on my mind one night and God, God, God stirred my faith. My wife told me, she said, I ain't worried about that. L -l Listen to how God stirred me. This is what my wife told me. She said, I ain't worried about that. I'm going to sleep. It was both something we were praying about. We were laying before God. I said, God, I'm just talking to you because I'm up talking. She said, I'm going to bed. And she got in the bed. Sister Alexander, one, two minutes she was asleep. And I said to myself, I said, hold it just one minute. I bind the enemy in my house. Listen to me. I'm going to go to sleep. See, your faith got to meet your reality. Faith good when you're talking to a friend. Faith good when you're talking about somebody else. But ain't nothing like wearing faith yourself. When is you going through it? Let me. I got to get out. I, I, I'm going to get stuck, Tim. It's, it's, it's the 4th of July celebration. I'm going to. Sometimes you got to have faith and trust him in your ditch. Can I get amen? How many of y'all know he'll, he'll pull you out your ditch? See, what you got to do, you got too small of an idea about the God you serve. I done left the doctor's office shook up. Doctor ain't got to speak but a few words to you to shake you. Oh, y'all, y'all ain't... How many of y'all ever left the doctor's office and you've been shook? It's like he took you and popped in your head. But well, some down in me. <laughs> I ain't talking about nobody else's faith. When they was running the tests, I, I got back and I talked to the doctor. She said, yeah, we, we ran these tests on your heart. I, said, I had already said, when you get punched in, before I could even get the day over with some had already took over it was <laughs> uh, equalizer had broken the equalizer sound it, it, you know what it began it been to filter out the devil's voice come on somebody say real ain't it doctor said well we did this echocardiogram of your heart and we was looking at everything i said did you see him no i before she didn't get the results i was asking her question i got a question for you i said did you see him in there she was looking First, she didn't even pay no attention. I said, did you see him in there? She said, what you talking about, Mrs. Simpkins? I said, did you see him walking in there? She said, who are you talking about? I said, did you see Jesus when y'all did your echocardiogram? Did they see him walking in my heart? She started smiling. I said, because see, whatever the report is, 
I'm going to go and rejoice right now. Come on. How, how many of y'all know, whatever it is, you still got to give God praise and honor. Yeah, you're going to be shaken. Some, how many of y'all know some stuff might shake you, but you got to have faith to balance where you're at. You got to have faith where you at. You can't, you can't read nobody book on what their experience was. Yeah, their experience good, but there's some experiences in here you can build off of. How many of y'all believe he's walking in here? Do y'all believe that? They didn't see him on the film, so I said, y'all had a bad test. Come on. And it came to pass, in verse 48, when the Philistine and Roman came and drew nigh to meet David, David hastened and ran to the army to meet the Philistine. He, he, he met him. He ran toward the army. Not his army, the army. That's a crazy man. He ran toward the army. Wait, Tim, think about this, man. The army over there, you got your folk behind you. You run to their army. Wide open to get to their army. Oh, come on. And you're running toward the Philistine. You're running toward their army and the Philistine. And then by the Philistine, well, what's wrong with this man? He's running toward and running toward the army. He might make a he gonna make a switch on you, boy. He's fixing to whoop your head in front of your company. Whenever you disrespect my God, it's up to my God to put you in your place. Listen to me. Nations got to bow to his word. There is a word above the president's word. Whenever the president's word try to usurp God's word, God's word going to always. See, some of y'all been reading the Bible. Don't y'all know God raised up preachers to talk to politicians? And now we got politicians feeding preachers. Come on, y'all help me. You got preachers that have been politicized. Instead of having politicians who've been preacherized. The preacher got to get a word to the nation. And tell the nation, if you don't walk by my word. If you don't walk by my principle. These are the things that will happen. Somebody said David did it. Somebody said, I got to work from God's grace tools. Yes. The stuff that God used to deliver you the last time. Work with the grace God has put on your life. You ain't got to be Deacon King because Deacon King got faith with the stuff he done been through. Everybody's faith in here has been customized. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. See, when you got a personal relationship with God, your faith has been customized. It's things we've been through that give us a customized. Mama Long, if I go to you and you start talking, you'll begin to tell me about how God delivered you. So when you face your next giant, you say, well, you did do this. And you did do that. And you did that. Now, after you done got through going through your, your hall of faith, then you can say, and you delivered an elder from cancer. And you touched Deacon King, straightened out some of them valves up in there that was blocked. Come on. Then you can talk about somebody else's faith and say, I know you that same God, but listen to me. David got fighting mad when they disrespected his God, but not. I don't believe I'm going to finish with one more. Can, can I finish this one, one more? I'm going I'm to draw off. He, he, not only did he whoop Goliath, the Bible said that he took his stone and he, he did this, Brother Washington, and he flipped off a stone. What an odd weapon in a big fight. What a small tool with somebody with big might. Ain't this amazing how God used the small thing. That's why Jesus said, listen, Tamara, don't worry about what you saw over there. But if you got the seed of the grain of a mustard, if you got the faith of a grain of a mustard seed. 
which is a small seed. He said, but if you got just a grain, Sister King, let me tell you what you can do. You can say to the sycamine tree, be plucked up by the root. Oh, come on, help me, y'all. He didn't say kill the sycamine tree. He said, but grab, grab it up by the root and be planted in the sea. You grow in the sea. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. Listen to me. He said, you can say to the mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea. He didn't say get rid of the mountain, get rid of the sycamine tree. God is saying, I will be bigger than your circumstance. Listen to me. I will make what you go through in a place where you can. When the last time, Elder, you've been on a cruise and you said, ooh, look at the big mountains, Denise. <laughs> when you out in the ocean sailing on a cruise, you don't see nothing but water. But under the ocean is some of the largest mountains, craters, and valleys. It's just in a place where it don't stop you from seeing. So God is saying, while all the other folks saw somebody nine feet, nine inches tall, David saw a grasshopper. His faith was bigger than his foe. Look at your neighbor and say, my faith is bigger than my foe. Now God, they saying it, let them use it. Come on. I'm that kind of preacher. Listen to me. See, when you say something, you need to be able to use it. Oh God, let me let me be quiet. I'm gonna stop that. That ain't good kind of Elder, it was so bad that he had hit him in the head with a stone, but the stone wouldn't take his head off. He said, I promise you I'm gonna cut your head off, and I ain't even have a sword with me. I don't even have one. So I'm gonna use your sword to cut your head off. How many of y'all know God will allow you to feat your enemy and use the tools they were gonna use against them? Use it against You dig one ditch, you better dig two. Because the trap you set just may be. Oh, he put it in my heart. The world can't change. <laughs> oh, don't make me go back, Elder. <laughs> I was working at J.C. Penney's. I was working in the section where we had the leather coats. Man, men, basic garments. I, was a, I, I had to cover them in the areas. And somebody had come in up under my watch and stole some leather coats, Elder. And he took them right out, right out the rack, brother. Right out the door, Sister Sappho. I know that brother was born to be a spy. He got it and went on out there and nobody knew. So they had all been looking at me talking about, did I know somebody to take the coats? Did I get with somebody to take the coats? And then they had the security lady that didn't like me because... I used to talk about the Lord. She didn't want to hear nothing about Jesus. That's okay. I just speak with her. What are you doing? She just turned the other way. She was head of security. So now they had me now. We know he didn't help somebody to steal some coats, leather coats. I said, I ain't got a leather coat. <laughs> At that time, I ain't had no leather coat. Tell my stealing a leather coat. I ain't stole one for me. Oh, come on, come on, y'all! Don't get, don't get mad at your pastor. <laughs> Wait, Mister Watts, I ain't got a leather coat. Tell me, I just stole some leather coats. I ain't got one. At least would have gave me one of the coats if I was stealing. You'd have gave me a coat. Come on, y'all! Don't get mad. Don't get mad at me, y'all. I ain't stealing no coats. I'm just saying, that, y'all. I was hanging with you then, the other, because if if I was stealing coats, you would have been an accessory. But I didn't. I wasn't stealing no coats. And I could tell they were coming up, looking, trying to see if they could write me up and do all this other stuff. And the lady was digging ditches for me and being mean. And one of the men said, you know, you know they're looking at you, don't you? And one of the guys on the job. I said, yeah, no, they can look. I said, I ain't really concerned whether they're looking or not. And he said, man, you're you, you, you going to be in trouble about this. He said, you can get in a lot of trouble. He said, it seemed like you're going to be. And I said, do you know who I serve? That's what I told him. I started to say this because we used to sing the song together, Hush, somebody calling my name. And at that point in time, I want to tell them, Hush, somebody calling my name. And they kept on digging ditches for me, and they kept on looking at me funny, and the manager looking at me funny, elder. 
she was looking at me funny? Uh, come on, somebody said he, he was steady talking to me. He said, you going to get your... I said, do you know who I serve? I serve, I, I serve a big God. I said, he'll fight for me. That's just what I told him. I said, he'll fight for me. They already, how many of y'all know, folk can, can see you and know you and somebody can say something about you and they ain't even true. They'll bite on it just like nothing. Next thing you know, been knowing you all your life. And one thing, they come up. I ain't know he would do that and didn't do it. I went on by myself working, doing what I had to do. She started trying to set me up. Then there comes a guy in there using the credit card. Card was stolen from Florida. He done been around shopping all around in, 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 in the store I was working at. And I look and see his card and his signature and name, and I know it ain't, it ain't the game number the game. So I be real nice to him and talk to him and get security down. They catch him, and somebody been robbed and beat, and he got the card. He gets turned in, but all the other cash shields was making worry about getting some money, a profit. So he gets caught. And the security person still trying to dig ditches for me. It wasn't long after that, they fired her, and I'm still working. The same tool you were using on me fell on you. When you were trying to get me fired, it cut your head off. Now, I'm going to still pray for you and love you. I don't hate you. Because we don't, we, 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 we don't hate you. But listen to me. Be careful what you're trying to do to a saint. Whatever you're trying to do, make sure you can handle what you're getting ready to dish out. Yeah. Oh, God, let me. Let me get the. Can I get, go to two? I'm, I'm, I'm going to two. I guess I can go to two. Can I get into any of this? I might have to be short. Number two, sometimes you have to make a stand. In Daniel chapter 3 verses 14 and 15, I just want to read a little of that. Can I read Daniel? Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro. That's what this is about right now. How many of y'all know it was, three of, it was three of them? Now, 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 now I, I need to be quick. So let me read this verse here, 14 and 15. Can y'all read that with me? And the king heard these words, and he was, no, no, let me go to, let me go to, let me go, I'm, I'm, yeah, 14 and 15. Now, now y'all know what happened. This is during the time when Nebuchadnezzar was, Nebuchadnezzar was king, and Nebuchadnezzar said, if you don't bow down to me, what's going to happen to you? Chapter 3, verses 14 to 15. I'm trying to make, I'm trying, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm in the wrong place, but I got the right thing in my mind. 14 to 15, chapter 3, 14. For Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psalter, Dosama and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. Look like me. I need you to worship me. Well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? He act like he God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said unto the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. In other words, I ain't got to take up for myself. God got my back. Amen. Amen. Now, now, now there's, a, there's a point here is you got to refuse to bow down to the melody and rhythm of this world. Can y'all hear the music that the world is making? The world got a rhythm. What, 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 what he was saying was, I'm going to put some praise music on to me. And I want you to bow down to the, when the rhythm get to going, I want you to bow down when you hear the music. Because you know they ain't just blowing them instruments, they, 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 they making music. How many of y'all know folk want to have worship service? And I was watching. 
I was watching a clip from a Beyonce. It was a, a clip from the concert, and the guy was talking about how she told the folks, she said, lift your hands and let me feel your energy. She said, now lift your hands to me and let me feel your energy. In other words, she would say, go and worship me right now. And let me feel your praise. Let me experience what Lucifer wanted to experience in heaven and God wouldn't let him. Amen. He wanted the same thing. So the first point is don't, don't, don't go with the rhythm of this world. And then point two is understand that the victory can come through death or life. Listen to what they responded. In verse 17, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. Somebody say, he can get me out my hole. Oh, yes, he can. From being, listen to me, from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. So he says, listen, he can't deliver me from the fiery furnace, but I know he's going to deliver me out of your hand. Whether it be death or life, he's going to deliver me. Wow. See, every Christian situation ain't the same. That's why some people don't understand. Some testimonies, some people die going through. Some testimonies, God raised people up. But every testimony ain't the same. I was in the hospital and Sister Deanna Bush was there and her mother-in-law had cancer, was in the room. And this other sister of faith came in and she said, I just know the Lord going to raise her up off of that bed. She got too much work to be done. She ain't fixing to die. Ain't nothing going to happen. She coming up out of that bed. And Deanna gracefully said, she looked at her. She said, she going to be fine whether God take her or whether he leave her. God is in control. One of the most dangerous things I can tell ministers of people going to visit folks in the hospitals, quit going in there. Unless you didn't have a vision from God, don't go in there and give folks false hopes and expectations and God ain't told you nothing. Come on, help me, y'all. I'm doing a little teaching now. Understand victory can come through life or death. We win either way, so suffer. Whether I live or die, God going to deliver me. Can I get amen? Now, let's go on down. Let's go to the other part. Skip on down to verse 23 through 26. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound, in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And what did they do? Somebody said they're taking a stand. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake. And he said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loosed. Somebody said loosed. They threw them in bound, but they were loosed. The fire burned, but it didn't burn the wrong stuff. When folks disrespect your God tell you, you're supposed to bow down to what the world say. See, that was just like the president saying, you need to bow down when I blow the flute. Come on. Listen to what he says. The answer is, oh, king, it's true. And the answer said, lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Jesus had walked up in the furnace. That was a pre-incarnate Jesus. Jesus had walked up in the furnace with him. <laughs> Come on, somebody said, Jesus, get in the furnace with you. And listen to me, Q. Listen to me. Listen, Sha, they were walking around in there. They weren't still. They were walking. They were taking a stand. They were walking around. I don't know what they were doing. They were dancing. I don't know if they were talking, but they were walking. And when I found out this furnace could hold four folks, so it was four of them in there, they was all walking around. Oh, come on, somebody said they were walking around, having a good time. But the thing about it is, was nothing burning them. Show me the pictures, Frank. I was getting ready to prepare this sermon, and I went down to the crematory. And I just got through writing how God was laying on my heart how God delivered the Hebrew boys in the furnace. How he was with them in their test. When you don't bow down to the enemy, the enemy want to embarrass you and make you look bad. But listen to me, they were willing to even give their life. You see, when you, when you got, 
When you can't even threaten a man's life, that's a dangerous man. They couldn't threaten his life because he was willing to give his life. So listen to me. You see this right here? This is a, a Bible. You, you can probably look on and see some of the pages, but this is a story. The book that won't burn. Listen to me. This is a, a Bible, and the Bible is from a man who the wife brought down to have cremated. But the man got saved some years before he died. And his wife said he got a Bible. And she began to tell. She said he used to read that Bible in the morning. He used to read the Bible at night. She said when she used to take him to the doctor, he used to read the Bible going to the doctor's office. She said when he would go visit and go over other people, go to his children, they say he had his Bible with him. And it was a red cover Bible. And if you can see, there's a little red. There was a red cover on the Bible. And he said he would be reading that Bible. And he told his wife, he said, when I die, I want you to bury me with my Bible. Whatever you do, I want my Bible with me. And she said that man was saved and loved God and read that Bible day in. So she said, I know he read it cover to cover ten times. Because he was always reading. He wasn't wasting no time. He was always in that Bible. It might have came late in life, but he was always in the Word. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Elder, they said they were about to cremate the man. And his son said, I ain't got the Bible. So he went home. He grabbed the Bible. And they brought it back. And they took the Bible and put it under the man's head. And they cremated him at 1,500 degrees, Elder, for three and a half hours. And he said when they, when, they, when they got ready to pull the man out, he said the Bible still was there. And if you look on there, he said you can even read some of the pages. And they took that Bible with some of the red cover on it. And they said that Bible should have been burned up, but the book wouldn't burn. He said they took that Bible and he asked that woman, he said, can I take this Bible and put it in our library at our church to tell folks there's a book that won't burn. Listen to me, listen to me. Elder, I ain't saying that every Bible you put in won't burn, but for this one was a sign. How many of y'all know God do things for a sign? I know y'all see this, but you got to understand, Sister Alexander, bones will burn, remains will burn, but the book, it was still at least intact. The book, he said, even you can look inside, and there were some pages, Sister Alexander, you can see the words on it. At 1,500 degrees, the word stills. Oh, come on, help me. I believe the fourth man got in this. In this. How many of y'all know you standing on a book that won't burn? Listen to me. The Hebrew boys, listen to me. You take, if you take some stuff and heat it up, it won't operate. Have you ever had your own, your phone in the in the car and it's a hot day and you have it in there too long? It won't operate. But the word will operate upon the heat. The Hebrew boys was in the middle of the fiery furnace and the word. Oh, somebody said the word. The book that will not. Somebody said a book that won't burn. The Hebrew boys were walking with the word. And when they looked up in there, the man was gone, everything was gone. And he said when they saw that Bible and they saw it was partly intact and you could read some of the words, he said they cold shot. He said, we're going home. We ain't staying here. He told me, he said, they got that stuff. He put that Bible in a plastic bag, took it to his church, gave it to his pastor. And he says, pastor preached a sermon, a book that won't burn. But what I'm telling you today, if somebody disrespect your God, I want you to understand that the word that you say is keeping you won't burn. Listen to me, they may burn you up, but the word won't burn. And when I thought about it, I said that God will say, he said, this is a miracle that we got a book intact after 1,500 degrees, after three hours, it should be burned up and incinerated. But listen, you can see some of the cover, you can see some of the words, because what's in the book is unburnable. It's made for fire. So all I'm saying to you today, if somebody disrespect your God, sometimes you got to fight, sometimes you got to stand. 
And sometimes you got to be like Daniel. You got to rest. You know, they set Daniel up. And Daniel, you know what Daniel did? They, they set him up so bad they couldn't even find nothing wrong with him. They were so jealous of him that they said, listen to me. King, don't let nobody bow for the next 30 days to nobody but you. But the Bible said that Daniel went in and prayed three times a day. And he got on his knees. Somebody said, you better stay on your knees. When the enemy disrespect you, stay on your knees. When folks talking about you, stay on your knees. When people trying to dig ditches, stay on your knees. And while you're on your knees, you're praying for them. <laughs> but check this part out, Brother Sappho. He didn't fight. He wasn't walking. How many of y'all, what y'all what y'all doing a den? <laughs> I, I, I don't know about y'all. We used to have stuff. We used to call it the den when I was growing up. They call it family room now, but it was a den back then. It wasn't too big or nothing. I mean, you, know, you, you could throw something in there. And it was a, the kitchen here, you throw a pee over there as a den. You rest in your den, don't you? He stayed on his knees and listened to me. He got in the lion's den. Folks thought he was going to go down. The king was concerned. Couldn't go back. He fasted all night. And you know what, David? When Daniel got down there, Daniel, he didn't fight. He didn't stand. He rested in his den. Sometimes you got to rest through the stuff you're going through. The stuff people say going to eat you up, you got to rest on it. I believe the lion's mouth was closed. They were walking around. They probably didn't understand why we ain't eating you. Can you imagine what a, a, a lion thinking about when he got big teeth and a big appetite and a man coming up in there and he said, I ain't eating you. <laughs> Can y'all think about the thought that God dropped into the lion mind? You ain't hungry now. I want you to become a couch. The lion came on and started licking Daniel. Can y'all imagine a lion licking a man? And I can imagine they came and started putting their mane all around him. They said, man, I can take me a nap on you. Lion laid down. He laid down on the line. I think he said, man, no wonder God made den for me to rest in. When folk want to have you worried, rest in your den. Folk talk about your God. Rest. Listen to me. Sometimes you can fight. Sometimes you can stand. But sometimes you just got to rest. Because he's going to fight your battle. Come on, let's pray. God, we give you honor and praise. We thank you, O oh God, that you are with us. And that when the world disrespects the God that lives in us, sometimes we can fight. Sometimes we can stand. But sometimes we can rest. And God, we rest on your word, your truth. It's a book that truly will not burn. And we just honor you. We give you praise and glory. And we thank you, God, if the Son of Man is listening, let him know, God, there's room at the cross. No matter what sin a person is in, there's room at the cross. Father, forgive me. I'm a sinner. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. I give my life to you in Jesus' name. And they all said, Amen.